So in this video, I want us to go through some questions uh, related to financial analysis and interpretation. All right, so before we continue, let's go and check our information first and see how the question look like. So it's question 6.3. We've been given the following extract information uh, from Accountant Orange LTD for the year ending 29 February 2020. Okay, then they give us a data opening balance and data closing balance. Once you see these two balance, you have to know that you are going to calculate average somewhere, somehow. Okay, you have to take note of that. Then we also have a creditors inventory, cash and cash equivalent, total assets, and total liability. Guys, Remember, total assets contain non-current assets and current assets. Total liability contain current liability and non-current liability. Okay, and let's proceed. We have a sales amount of 80,000. Then they say note, 50% of sales are on credit, which means that the other 50% are on cash. Okay, let's go to a required part now. Okay, then they said required. Calculate the following ratio for the year ended 29 February 2020. It's our current year, 29 February 2020. Okay, then they say 6.3.1. We have a current ratio, 5 marks. AC test ratio, 4 marks. Average data collection period, 6 marks. Solvency ratio, 3 marks. The reason why current ratio has a lot of marks guys is because we are not given a current assets we have to calculate it first we are not given non-current assets we have to calculate it first okay then let's go and first do our current ratio okay 6.3.1 okay they required us to calculate a current ratio okay the formula that we are going to use to calculate a current ratio is current asset is to current liability okay then let's go to our information and check our current asset okay now we are looking for current asset for 2020 which means that our opening balance, guys, is the balance for last year. We can use it to calculate a current asset for this year. We have to take a closing balance. Okay. Then we have a data of 9,800. It's all under current assets. 9,800. We also have inventory of 8,000. It's all under current assets. And we also have cash and cash equivalent of 24,690. And we also have, what else? Let's check. We also have total assets, which is a uh, contain non-current assets, which we don't have to include it here, which means that we can use total assets. Okay. Which means that now in this case, we have to add the balance that we have for for current asset okay the first one we have amount of 9800 plus 8000 plus 24690 then it's going to give us a current asset of 42,400 now we have our current asset we have to calculate for none for current liabilities okay now let's go back to our information and check the current liability that we have you can only see a creditor of amount of eighteen thousand eight hundred do we have any other no because the other balances we already use them for for calculation of current assets they can't be in a both side okay then we have amount of 18,800 for creditors, which is current liability. All right, 
Now we have our true balance now, which means that in this case, we can be able to calculate our ratio. So the max allocation, guys, is coming from here. All this uh, addition that we are doing is going to contain a mark. Okay. Now, which means that we have to divide 42,490 by 18,800. Then it's going to give us, remember this side is always 1. Then it's going to give us 2,26. Simple as that. Then if you, or you do all this process, you're going to get max allocation of 5. Okay, now let's proceed. Acid test ratio 6.322. Our acid test ratio. Remember, acid test ratio, the formula said we have to take a current asset minus inventory is to current liability. Okay, let's proceed. Our current assets were already calculated. We have it, it's 42,000. 400 night but we have to take out our inventory minus let's go back and check if our inventory was how much a thousand our inventory was eight thousand okay then is to current liability of eighteen thousand eight hundred okay let's first subtract uh, our inventory of 8,000 then we will get the amount of 84,490 is to current liability of 18,800 okay then now we can be able to calculate our acid test ratio in this case which means that we have to say this side is always 1. Then 34,490 divided by 18,000. Divided by 18,800. Then it will give us 1,83. Okay. So this is what we have to do when we calculate our question 6.3.1 and 6.3. In three, all the if you do all this correctly, which means that you are going to get nine marks for this part only. Very simple stuff. Okay, so now let's proceed to the next question. Let's proceed to the next question. Our next question they said we have to calculate average data collection period 6.3.3. Collection period. Okay, so now the formula that we have to use when we calculate average data collection period, we have to say average data is to credit sales. Why do we use credit sales? Apply by 365. The reason why we use credit sales, guys, is because when we talk about a creditor, a, a debtors, or credit sales, we are talking about a person who purchases on credit, which means that those who purchase on cash, they are not involved on this um, calculation. Okay? So, uh, this is the formula that we have to use. Okay? Then now let's identify our average debtors. The reason why this uh, equation is 6 marks is because we have to calculate what? Average. Okay. Then we have a data opening balance of 5,200. And we also have 9,800 of closing balance. We have to add them together and we do what? Average. Okay. Let me calculate. Then it's going to be 5,200. Plus 9,800 is going to give you 15,000, then you divide by 2. Then your average will be 7,500. 
8,700. Okay. Then we divide by a credit sales. Then we multiply by 365. Okay. Let's go back and check our credit sales. Remember we have been given the balance of sales. Ne? Of 80,000. And they said note 50% of sales are on credit. Which means that uh, we just have to take half of 80,000. Which is 40,000. And we make it what? A credit sales. Okay. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. But make sure that you show how you have calculated this 40,000. By in a bracket, 80,000. Multiply by 50%. Which is going to give us 40,000. Okay. Then now we can now calculate our final answer and check how many days are these data take to to pay us back divided by 40,000 okay then we multiply by 365 then these data are taking 68 days this is very bad this is very bad remember a norm for a days they must pay us within what within 30 days if it's more than 30 days it's not good okay uh, i hope this one you will understand it then the last part uh, they said we have to calculate a solvency a solvency ratio okay a solvency ratio guys we are dealing with what we call uh, okay it's 6.3.4 a solvency ratio in this case remember we are looking we want to check whether the company will be able to pay a long term liabilities which means that we have to use what non current assets is to non current liabilities okay now we have our non current assets let's go to information We don't have, but we have total. Okay, we have a total assets, which means that if we have total assets, we can take a total assets of one forty five thousand, and we subtracted a current assets that we have. It's gonna give us non current assets. The remaining will be non current because total assets contain non current and current. Okay. 145 then we subtract our data of 9800 and we also have to subtract inventory of 8000 and subtracted cash and cash equivalent of 24690 then it's gonna give us 102510 okay then let's proceed to non-current liability. Non-current liability, we don't have it, but they give us total liability of 98,000, which means that out of 98,000 of total uh, liabilities, what we can do, we can just subtract a creditors, which is current liability, so that we're left with non-current liability. Okay, 98,000 minus... A creditors of 18,800. Then it's going to give us 29,200. Okay. Then now we can be able to calculate our solvency ratio. On the credit side, it's always 1. Okay. Then, which means that now we are going to say a 1 or 2. 510 divided by 79 okay then it give us 1 comma 29 is to 1 okay so that was very simple and straightforward question however guys you have to make sure that you practice more and more and more as you can see we have different types of question under ratio analysis and we have different 
information that they provided it and that they provided it to us so you have to make sure that you know all the tricks that they, they can play all right so under analysis uh, on this question we are not required to, to to comment or to analyze the results that we've been given but if you, you have been given 1,29 is to 1 simple means that the company will be able to to repay the long-term liabilities because the assets are greater than the liability side okay so even the first one and the second one that we started with we were getting more assets in the altars because the first one i think we got two comma something is to one which means that we can still be able to do what to pay the ratio is still good even if we subtracted inventory and um, as it is the ratio the company left with one comma something which means that the company can still be able to to pay short-term liabilities without having what without having inventory okay so i hope you learned something guys sharp